kind of interesting this morning was that three times now, this is probably the third time, I've actually recorded this to see if it was going to work. So each time I've gotten a chance to kind of get further dressed so that I've actually recorded this for the third time. So this isn't video meditations. We'll call this a video special. <laughs> Third time's the charm. Praise the Lord. So let's do something different. Since, obviously, if I've recorded it three times, that's not have been what God wanted done. So, we'll use... a different format and formula this morning to reflect on and to consider what it is that God may be saying to me about today. Because apparently we're doing something different today than we do normally. So we'll call this the video special. When you're suddenly shaken, have you ever been doing just great and someone says something or you see something or you remember something from the past and suddenly your peace is gone? Zip! Yep! <laughs> I must have found it. That seemed to have been what happened this morning. Kind of like threw me off track. And haven't been on track since. <laughs> Boy, we recorded and like the sound was off. We recorded and the video was off. We recorded and the camera was tilted. I just couldn't believe that everything had been off. You know, and it was kind of like, huh, what's going on, Lord? The devil made me do it. No, it's not the devil. It's just normal. Suddenly you feel like a failure. You wonder why you've done what you've done or why you haven't done more or why you haven't done things differently. As you begin to think about it all, a cloud of depression blocks out the warmth and contentment you felt just moments ago. That happened to me one day when our youngest son David came home from college for the weekend. On Sunday afternoon when he was ready to leave to return to school, he came to say goodbye to me. I had been taking a nap and David came in and kissed me goodbye. When he left, I prayed for him and his safe journey, then rolled over to catch another 40 weeks. But as I did, impulsively, my thoughts raced to the attic of my mind to pull out dusty boxes of stored memories. I began rehearsing days gone by by searching them out to see if I had been the mother I should have been, or if I had adequately prepared my son for what lay ahead of him in life. As I rummaged through the past, suddenly if-onlys and what-ifs began to attack me. And just like that, the peace and contentment that had been mine when I lay down for a nap were gone. What had happened? Nothing had changed. Circumstances weren't any different, except my thoughts. Yet that was enough to change the entire atmosphere of my afternoon. My joy had turned to mourning, my peace to turmoil. My rejoicing over recent spiritual victories was now overshadowed by doubts, inadequacies and fears. Not because of anything my son had done. David is a fine young man, stable, confident, committed. But because of my own mental turmoil, because of a thought process I had indulged in. And beloved, you know I'm not unique. You too have been there. And when you were like me, it probably had not been a one-time occurrence, but something that can come upon you when you least expect it. Why? Where do these thoughts come from? And what do we do when this happens? The problem is that so often we forget that we are in warfare and that Satan's target is our mind. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It is only logical that Satan would attack our mind. Proverbs 23, 7. He disguises himself, of course. He doesn't want us to think he has anything at all to do with this evil thought process. Yet he does, and that is why God tells us to take up this shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 16 and 17. This was precisely what I had to do that Sunday afternoon after David left. I had to purposely choose to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6. And to Philippians 4.8, it at the door of my mind. Then I had to walk by faith, taking truths such as Romans 8.28 and 30, and living by them rather than by feelings, thoughts, and evaluations of life. How am I able to do this? How am I prepared to do this? 
What have I done to make me victorious in these times of natural warfare? The answer is, I know our God and His ways. To have this knowledge, two things must be an integral part of my life. I cannot survive without them. Regular, diligent study of the Word of God. with God and faithful study of his word equip and establish us so we can stand firm when Satan attacks our thoughts. Brethren, what's over is true, what's over is honorable, what's over is right, what's over is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there be any excellence and in anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. You know, my thought process was interrupted today, and sure enough, I don't know what it was, or if I was an attack, or what. But you know, it threw me off, and threw me out, and threw me away, and threw me down, and threw me all around, you know. But now that I think about it, praise the Lord, God can take me to the place of recognizing Him in it, and knowing that He has a means of providing my mindset to be focused in on him, I think that the reality of what we go through sometimes is simply God taking what Satan meant for evil and turning it to good by way of causing us to go back and reevaluate our study time and look at something in the scriptures. I am the Lord your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. And kind of thinking about it a lot, you know, meditating on it pondering it, getting it in our head and repeating it over and over again. You know, there are five scriptures that I taught my wife that, you know, you could live by. You know, and they're called the five assurances. You know, assurance of salvation, assurance of forgiveness, assurance of answered prayer, assurance of wisdom, and assurance of... can't think of them all. <laughs> but when you're able to repeat the scriptures, you know, by way of regurgitating them or repeating them or some people say memorizing them, then it kind of helps you to program your mind so that you're not dwelling on that distractions that may be an attack of Satan, you know, that's coming at you. You know, it's kind of like putting on, hey, I don't need to look over there. I can see you straight ahead. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 for me is one of those that, you know, you live by. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not in thine own understanding, and all thy ways of and he shall direct thy path in assurance of forgiveness. When we say that if we confess our sins, He is faithful just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Assurance of guidance. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who abradeth not, but give it to all men liberally. And that was assurance of wisdom. Assurance of salvation. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who hath the Son hath life. He who is not the Son of God hath not life. Assurance of... I don't know. <laughs> but in those reassurances and assurances as we begin to consider and program our mind less from television, radio, programming you know, even our own thought process of what we failed to do or did do God can take it around and turn it around back to his way of thinking so that we can accomplish the things that he wants us to do as opposed to what we may consider what we want to do I know I'm looking at the beautiful sunrise coming in. It's about ready to crest over the, the trees, you know. And as it does, I'm thinking, boy, what a beautiful day the Lord has made that I can rejoice and be glad in it. But the choice is mine to make. Will I rejoice and be glad? Or will I give opportunity for Satan to attack again? You see, when you choose the direction you go, then you'll know by way of your programming. You know, like TV has programming, station channels, what's on TV, change the channel. Well, sometimes spiritually, maybe your programming needs to change the channel and tune in on what God is saying, as opposed to what Satan is playing with. So, maybe for you today, don't worry about what you were programmed to do. Choose to do what it is that God is inspiring you to do today.